everybody and welcome to another video by thepilotreport.com. I'm your host Len Costa. Today's video is another installment in our interview series called Notice to Airmen where I sit down with various aviation business owners and professionals and ask them to share some information about their products and services. And on the call with me today is Dan Pimentel of AirplaneEaster.com. Glad to have you on today, Dan. Len, thank you very much. So, um... I first got uh, my exposure to you right at the last end of your tail end transition from Aviator Dan to Airplanista on Twitter. Um, you know, that was about maybe six months ago, roughly, a little That's longer about right, ago. About October of 2010. So, so tell us a little bit about what is, what is Airplanista? Well, I've been a, let me go to the very beginning. I've been a journalist slash writer slash photographer since uh, about 1974. Okay. And, the past six years, I was a blogger, uh, blogging at AviatorDan.com, and it was going along fine. Had a lot of fun with that. It's a great uh, outlet for my writing. But I was looking at my seventh year as a blogger and started wondering if some of uh, if that platform maybe had plateaued. As far as my traffic, it had plateaued. Mm-hmm. And I, about a year prior to that, so maybe in 2009, I was doing a a blog post, and the word airplanista as in fashionista, barista, came right. in and popped into my head. And I thought, wow, that's an interesting word. So I Googled it, and there was no zero results. Which mm-hmm. It's almost impossible on Google to have something that nobody's ever used. I was so floored, I immediately like jumped right over and registered the <laughs> domain name. Yeah. And I thought, I'm going to do something with that someday. I don't know what. So then when I uh, got ready to do the seventh year of the blog, I, I, I was looking for something else. How can I punch this up to the next level? Mm-hmm. And came across the uh, page flipping platform that I'm using now that d- displays a PDF document with the page flip. Mm-hmm. And, I th- and I was so floored by that. I thought, wow, that's really cool. That I went ahead and started playing around with the idea of, wow, I've got – at that point, I had 900 pro- posts mm-hmm. that I'd written on my blog over the years, plus lots of feature articles, magazine articles, random, whatever. I thought, wow, that would make maybe I could just put that all into a magazine form. I've been I've worked for a couple of magazine designing places and been a graphic designer forever. And I said, well, okay, I'll just throw together a first issue and see what happens. And I was hoping to get uh, a thousand readers, which is about what I was getting on the blog per month. Well, I ended up getting eleven thousand the first month, mm-hmm. <laughs> and so I thought, wow, this this is pretty cool. Maybe there's something to this. And so I went ahead and I experimented with changing my name on Twitter, mm-hmm. which they luckily they make it easy to do, from Aviator Dan to Airplanista, and it just took off. Uh, people mm-hmm. were just submitting material to me, complimenting it. They think, oh, it's so great because I have a lot of focus on uh, people that are not getting in the the magazines. Uh, they're all great magazines, and they've been around forever, and they certainly serve their purpose. But I was kind of uh, presenting people that were uh, good writers, good photographers – but they weren't getting the, the coverage in the other magazines. And mm-hmm. it's, just, it's become a really popular pro- project. Mm-hmm. Excellent. So um, off the call, I was asking you a little bit about your background. Uh, you are, you do fly, you're a pilot. What, um, you know, what got you into aviation in the first place? I have the standard story. I used to ride my Stingray bike over to the <laughs> Fresno airport. I mean, with the big handlebars and the whole bit. Uh, and hang on the fence, literally, mm-hmm. and watch uh, at the end of two nine right, and watch the seven oh sevens and the uh, I think there were Delta darts from the uh, Fresno National Guard okay. take off. Loved it. Uh, if you look in uh, about oh, several years ago, I had a story in the LPA pilot that I wrote about this old radio we had in our house. It was an old nineteen uh, thirties model Zenith, mm-hmm. and it had air frequencies. And so I, I lived literally in the approach in the departure path from two nine or right and left, and just from about 10 years old, just loved every minute of it, uh, everything about aviation. Awesome. And, and, but it, like everybody else, it took me until 1996 to get my private pilot's license. Just okay. Because of fa- family and finances. Mm-hmm. So you've been a uh, private pilot since 96. Have you gotten any additional ratings, instrument or commercial or anything like that? Got my instrument in 2009 and we own a 1964 Piper Cherokee 235. Very nice. Happens to Happens to be named Katie. If, Katie. If you're a, a a longtime reader of my blog, you've probably seen lots of yes. stories about Katie. <laughs> I have. <laughs> now, how have you found uh, the internet has helped a, you know, your publication is online. How have you felt that 
the internet has helped you produce that and uh, dis, you know distribute it to the masses. The internet has allowed me to just grow this in ways that you couldn't do 15 years ago. Right. The I, I'm a big fan of Twitter. I don't spend much time on Facebook except looking at my photos of my granddaughter. <laughs> but I love Twitter because of the immediacy of it. There is a giant population of pilots in the aviation community on Twitter. Yes. These are the same group that, um, and you know, you know who they are. You're involved. Mm-hmm. I'm involved. There's, I don't know, I, I can't put a number on it. I'm going to say maybe 200 uh, people out of the 540,000 pilots that are on there all the time. And they retweet and they, mm-hmm. they send me story ideas. Uh, so I'm able to use that. Uh, and what's fantastic about it is if I was working in the 1980s producing this magazine, I would hit the streets and burn shoe leather to try to mm-hmm. find a story. Now I just go on there and I say, uh, I'm looking for somebody who flies, uh, I don't know, an ERJ uh, you know, E145. And mm-hmm. Does anybody know anybody that flies one of those? Mm-hmm. And I can I can get four people come back in a half hour. Right. Hey, great, I know somebody I'd like to interview. You know, you know, I have pictures, blah, blah, blah. It's so it's from that regard, it's been fantastic to be able to use the internet, mm-hmm. and it's worldwide too. There's there's a couple of that. There's that. I mean, I to have a, dis, a print distribution worldwide would be probably almost impossible unless you're Time Magazine or Business Week. Mm-hmm. And also, there's the the clickable links that are in my magazine, which is completely different than print. Right. I can tell an advertiser, look, I'm you know. If you put an ad in here, they can click right on your domain name and go right to your site. And right. so it's really, handy. it's really handy. One of the other questions I was curious about is with a digital publication, what sort of what sort of challenges do you face uh, putting it together? I mean, is this something that's all time consuming? It takes you, I mean, as far as it, it's quite in depth, the stories, the photos, um, you know, what kind of challenges do you have on a month to month basis? Interesting question. We have a couple of people here that I... I work with I've I've been a graphic designer now since 74 in various ways I guess back in those days they, we weren't called graphic designers because there was really no computers right I've but as a reporter uh, I was a sports editor for a number of years working where you have to literally write a story as it's happening almost mm-hmm. so I've I've developed a writing style where I can almost sit down to write a story and think about it as I'm writing it. And I, in other words, my brain stays a couple of steps ahead of my fingers. So the story just comes out. And mm-hmm. with a little bit of editing and tweaking, it seems to be right. I almost always have it open as I'm mm-hmm. working at my ad agency. And somebody will e- email me their con- the content that they promised. I'll open it up, look at it. And what I'll do is I'll just immediately copy and paste it and throw it over in the magazine. Maybe I won't make it pretty at that point, but I'll, I'll just put it over there and like it's on standby. Mm-hmm. And then in the evening when I have the time to work on the magazine, I'll go flow it in and make it perfect and, and set it up. So it's kind of an ongoing thing all month. Okay, excellent. Um, what do you have, uh, what are your future plans and hopes for the publication? The future plans and hopes are actually, this is an interesting time for Airplanista magazine because we are, as we speak, in the process of developing a paid subscription system. Okay. The big, big difference is that we're developing what's called a special deals and premium content section mm-hmm. for the paid advertisers. I'm, I mean, for the paid subscribers, excuse me. So my advertisers are coming up with deals, coupons, uh, dollars off, mm-hmm. things like that, and they'll they'll be in a special section. So when people will go to to buy a paid subscription to the magazine, they'll be able to get in here, and for a whole year they'll have access to a number of uh, some pretty sub- substantial deals. And mm-hmm. any one of those will, be, will they'll get their money back five times over okay. uh, on the money they pay for the subscription. So we hope that that will allow a revenue stream to take place where I can compensate more people, mm-hmm. take it to, again, another level. It's It's been every month it's, it's grown. Uh, we, we January we had 32% growth. This last month we had 25% growth. So tell us um – yeah, you know, you're the air, the website is airplanista.com. You're also you said you're on Facebook and Twitter. Well, how can folks get a hold of you if they want to interact with you or you know talk to you or anything like that? Uh, the say, uh, the easiest way is just go on to Facebook or Twitter. Uh, Airplanista, just search Airplanista magazine. We should come right up. Okay. Uh, on our fan our fan page, or is it a friends page? I don't know. They change it every week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, and then Twitter, same thing. I, it, you just search me on Twitter. Well, folks, this has been Dan Pimentel of Airplanista.com on our Notice to Airmen interview series. It's been a real pleasure making this video for you today. Once again, I'm Len Costa with ThePilotReport.com, wishing you clear skies and calm winds. Take care, everybody.